Hello everyone, welcome back to another video with DH Crouch Marine Limited. I am Darren, um, there is nobody else here, but me and myself and you dear viewers. So today's exciting video will be a PRM 150 teardown and assessment and just a kind of clean up and put back together. Um, there's nothing actually wrong with, with, with these boxes. I say these, I have two PRM 150s. I'll only be doing one today because there's no point doing two at the same time, that's just silly. Basically they are being um, put back onto a new engine installation where the old engine has failed but because they're 150s they're perfectly good gearboxes um, but I've got, what I've ordered from PRM directly is um, gasket kits and seals and whatnot. Um, and I think it's a good idea to, to just take them apart and have a look because they've had a life, we don't know what's going on inside. Worst case scenario I've got a clutch pack um, I've only got one because I didn't really know whether I need more than that, but if I need another one, PRM are very quick at delivering, so I can actually um, get them quick. Cup of tea in hand, because uh, I've had two coffees today already, Tea time for tea is a good idea, so without further ado, I'm going to get the oil drain, I don't think I've drained the oil out of this yet, Ugh, with my tray. This, this 150 was actually on, on an old Isuzu engine, which um, has suffered has now gone to the scrapyard in the sky because nobody wanted bits from it, but there we go. Um, which is a shame, but I can't keep everything. I don't have room for it. So I'll take the, um, the register plate off of this. This is no longer required for this installation. Um, the gearbox will get a good clean down and I will show the inner workings because I know people have been asking about how 150 works and how they operate. Um, and I will take the clutch packs apart and have a look at them because I've got uh, all, the, all the new O-rings because they go crispy and they get a bit, bit brittle and a bit old. Um, and I'll show you the control valve and I'll use the compressed air to show you how the clutch packs actually operate which is good fun so uh, without further ado I'll do a little speed up because it's that way it's not too long a video Okay, so as you can see, an array of parts here. Um, they're only degreased and cleaned. I haven't pre prepared them yet. Um, when I say prepare, I'm going to take the, the polishing um, polishing mat, polish up all these sealed journals, and clean back the um, spline uh, spline shaft and things like that. Just just give things that need to be cleaner more attention. But I wanted to show you close up anyway. These old uh, friction drive plates. They've um, definitely had their day. They are, they are totaled. I mean, obviously, you could probably put them back in. They'd probably still do something, but they would eventually just fail, and it's a waste of energy. I mean, that one. And if you can make it out, it's got, a, it's got, a, it's it's deformed, which means the clutch pack's going to bind, which means it's going to constantly grind, and it's always going to get, it's always going to disintegrate. All the um, friction materials literally come away. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty bad. That was probably the middle one actually, and then there's another drive plate which is bad. And the discoloration is heat because it's the um, it's been abused. Uh, it's probably being overloaded or doing more than it should do. Um, but it isn't a head clutch, and eventually they will wear out. That is just the nature of the beast. Um, just wipe my gloves. 
so in comparison to the, uh, the stern or the reversing gear uh, clutch pack so this is this is what's come out as is so as you can see no discoloration you know it's been used but they're to my eye they're flat I haven't actually put a straight edge across them yet but the friction dry plate looks good friction dry plate looks good you know they're supposed to be interlaced they're, they're, they're all they're in good nick they they are serviceable um the customers want to spend a fortune on this just wants it to work and i said the clutch a change of clutch pack seals and it will be all right for a while um and the master plate is okay as well so um this i'll reassemble and talk up as per the manufacturer's um, specifications so that's good for reversing so the head clutch uh which is here so obviously i'm gonna and to keep that because that's useful for me in the workshop for pressing things it's a nice little solid disc of but those are going in the bin they are done um, off to the land of recycle and here we have a brand new clutch pack I knew I'd need one I had a feeling I suspect the other box is going to need one as well but um, until I've opened it I don't know but, but this job is pending and I'm keen to get it done because customers waited a while now and we've had to wait for a few things and so there's all your new gubbings and fixings there's your your nut for the end, um, new um, bolts or machine screws because they're fully threaded shanks, uh, thrust washer, springs, guide pins, um, bushings and all that sort of stuff. Lovely, lovely. And then pièce de résistance. I speak a little French, not much. Bonjour le français, in case you're watching. I don't know if I'm in French. Anyway, a brand new set of clutch uh, friction plates and drive plates and the master plate. Look at that. Brand spanking shiny new. Hello wifey, should I pause it quickly? Okie dokie, she's nodding at me. Oh, I'm just checking the um, the manual for the torque settings for the main bolts. I can remember a lot, but I can't remember everything. Tightening torques, page 28. It's about there, I reckon. 7, 11, 15, 18. Tightening torques, clutch pack, 14 Newton meters, 14 Newton meters, I chew my words a lot these days, or 10.3 pounds, foot pounds, but we'll do it in 14 Newton meters because that does Newton meters, okay much at all but we must use a torque wrench really important to use a torque wrench on these clutch packs because if you get uneven load on the bolts then you could cause them to, to pop off and break and if it comes apart inside the box it's cause a catastrophic failure it would be disastrous so must use the correct setting so this torque wrench Whoa. so there's 15 zero let's back it off a bit Right, it's 10. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, I'll use that one on reach, it's fine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Three, 
four, five, six. Okay, and then depress the spring on the torque wrench until I'm ready for it again, otherwise you can cause the spring to fatigue quicker than it should. So I can just rest there. So that's basically the reversing clutch pack, mostly assembled. There's a, there's a, a nut that goes on there, but that has to go into the main bearing in the case, which is out there drying. Um, so this is, I'm just gonna show you principally how these work. So let me grab out my V blocks and we have a little, little close up. Tall enough. Hmm. So I need to raise them. <sighs> do, 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 do. What have I got immediately? Grab a ball. Huh. A couple of pieces of mild steel. So I've shown you with the PRM Delta and it's it, it's much the same thing on this box. This is very, very similar to a Delta 20. I think this is a very early 150 actually. Um, the, the, the other boxes I've got, I've got a brand new one, another one under the bench. I think this is much closer to um, uh, Delta 20 than, than some of the boxes I've seen. So just to recap here, in case you can't see, so just down here, you've got the oil control rings. They're like piston rings, but they, they spin rather, well, they stay stationary or spin. And the idea is that oil is delivered, you know, the flow is delivered in between the two um, rings again. And there's a void inside this main hub here, or this gear here. And there's a there's a piston or ram, I don't know how you pronounce it. And then this is this is the cage clutch pack. Yeah, it's wet to multi plate clutch pack. Uh, and then this is this is the, the driving mechanism here, which once it receives power, will deliver power to the output shaft. Um, the output shaft being just here at the back, I haven't cleaned it yet, and then there's a main gear here. Um, once I've prepped all this, I'll do a bit, bit better demonstration, but so that's how it would actually sort of fit below it. But for all intents and purposes, we're focusing on the clutch pack. So I'm going to turn my compressor on and show you something. So excuse the noise. So basically when you select um, reverse or a stern, because this is the reversing pack, you're diverting oil into the um, clutch pack. Can you see that movement there? So look in here. So if I do this, Obviously I can't feed oil all the way round. So basically that runs freely until this is engaged. So I can't stop the noise because it's the airflow. So basically, whilst you've, you've got a, a drive selected, oil is being delivered inside this chamber and is compressing the clutch pack, which makes this receive power from the engine drive uh, and through this and into reverse. Um, the oil pump is always delivering oil round the engine, uh, sorry, round the gearbox, always to lubricate everything, because there's needle bearings and all such things in there. But that's basically what happens with the clutch pack there. Um, at the moment, it free spins. So that as you as you know before, uh, the output shaft would free spin. But I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to pull it on the um, bench like I did before, with the box half missing, and attempt to show you. And again. welcome back. So here's the half built box. So basically, all the functional parts are pretty much assembled. Um, the other half of the casing is uh, just below us here, and I, I haven't, I've, I've put the new lip seal in the end for the uh, input. But there's some, there's some little covers that need to go in as well. And... Anyway, so um, this is the input shaft. Power's been delivered to the flywheel by the engine. Uh, there's a drive plate attached to the front of the um, flywheel, and power has been delivered constantly to this. You may see these wobbling slightly, but the, the bearings have got a bit of play, so. That's what these other bearings are for to help support that. Um, 
as you can see, the output shaft is doing nothing. Um, so until you get the control arm here, or the valve, selected ahead or astern, then oil is basically just being driven by the pump at the front of the engine into the into all the bearings and then back into sump, which is the bottom part of this here. Um, so as, as the same as the Delta uh, range of gearboxes, if you divert oil into this clutch pack, uh, and you'll see just on the right here, a clutch pack being um, synthesized with air pressure rather than oil uh, pressure, because I haven't got oil to do it. Uh, that, so that's, that, that's closed now, for example. So as you do that, you'll see the output shaft moving around. Okay, so then you release the pressure, come back to neutral on the control valve, and then this would spin again. And then if this clutch pack was to lock up with the, what you get then is, oh, I can't actually do it with my hand, it's really hard. Output shaft going in the other direction. Same as before. So, sorry, I am trying to mimic this. Now, it gives you an idea, it gives you an idea. So, yeah, the, the 150, I'll take you for a little tour, is just a heavier duty than the Delta range. The input shaft is, is, is stronger and better. Um, that little spring is actually for the uh, oil bypass valve, so any excessive pressure is dumped back into sump. A uh, little tour around the front here. Um, and you know this is your output which delivers power to your propeller. This casing here is your oil pump. This is always being driven inside, yeah, from here. Uh, sorry, from so power's going in there. As you can see at the back of this, which is just there, that's uh, delivering power to your oil pump. So always spinning, and from the engine point of view, it's clockwise. From the flywheel point of view, it's anti-clockwise. So that's always always running fl uh, fluid. That's picking it up. And then it goes off up into the um, up into the various workings of the box, and then you get power on the output. Not a lot more to see compared to the Delta, really. Um, as I say, this is, I think this one, this particular 150, may be an older one, but I can't actually, I can't actually work that out yet. But there we go. So this one had to have a brand new clutch pack for the head clutch because it was completely chewed up and burnt out. Um, it's got a brand new clutch pack now and a master disc at the front. Um, and the reversing uh, clutch pack is basically uh, re-put back together with, with the old clutch pack because it was in, in very good condition in my opinion. Um, but it's all new O-rings to control everything. I had one boo-boo. Uh, I actually had a, a broken oil control ring. Uh, there's another piece on the bench here and a piece has gone missing somewhere. And that's actually uh, at the very end of these hubs. In fact, I've got Another one, 50 in pieces. This is one I own personally. So I've pinched the ring off here in a, in a, pin, in a pinch because I wasn't completely rebuilding that. I was just repairing it basically. So I've pinched the ring off this. I'm gonna completely rebuild this properly. New bearings, clutch pack, the whole lot. I'll go to town on this one. But this one is, is good enough to, to do its job. It's serviceable, it'll provide the owner with you know use. Uh, this is gonna go on from his Isuzu, which is now scrapped and gone, to his Canal Line 52, I think we're putting in. Uh, and I've got that ready to go. Um, just needed his box. There we go. So, yeah, um, nice big bearing at the front. Some roller bearings here. Uh, this is your seal journal for the input of the um, gearbox. This this bar here is to hold the. It's got a clamp and it holds the cable on. And allows you to select your drive ahead or astern. And then this is one of the oil cooling pipes. Uh, and that's one of the other one of the oil cooling pipes. So there we go. Pretty pretty straightforward stuff. Um, if you're not sure about anything, ask me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please uh, do give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. Um, I'm doing my very best to, to make good content. I am going for rather a lot at the moment. We, we're moving and with babies and all sorts of stuff and having to relocate. So uh, I may not be making the greatest quality edited videos that I would like to, but that will change as I progress. For now, I wish you all uh, very much the best and hopefully lockdown will be um, eased up it, it, with, with good data and, and people can start going back to some semblance of normality. Thanks for watching.